Uh, Brie Hilmer will be speaking next, and Brie Hilmer is a trained statistician. Cool. Um, and she told me, and I do not know the context, but she has interviewed prisoners. Yeah, prisoners of documentation, maybe. I don't even know. Hi, everybody. Who's excited to hear about just-in-time documentation? Oh, wow, what a response. I'm standing here watching this catering crew set up all our food and it's wafting over here, and I can't decide, like, is this a good thing or a bad thing that you're all, like, smelling your lunch and have to wait for 30 minutes? And I feel like it's a good thing. You're going to have positive associations with what I'm talking about. Um, I want to take a quick minute to thank Eric and the organizers for such a great space, um, giving us permission, all of us introverts, to permission to be our best extroverts. Um, you guys have all been so welcoming. This is my first Write the Docs, and I'm really excited to be here. So thanks for listening to me. So um, I've been at SurveyGizmo for over four years, but in 2014 I became the documentation coordinator, which sounds like I manage a team, but I'm one person, so I'm managing myself, <laughs> which is a harder job than you might think. Um, and I did some visioning. This is a thing we do at SurveyGizmo to define sort of our goals for um, success. So what does success look like in a year? What's it look like in five years? And so for my year success, the two things that I wanted to focus on were creating a living knowledge base. Our users did not want to use our documentation. Um, it didn't have great content. We didn't keep it up to date. In addition, our users are primarily not very tech savvy, right? So um, the experience that you or, I, you or I have when we're trying to use a given tool where we just like Google and try to find the answer, we have these problem solving skills that our users primarily don't have. Um, so um, our users didn't want to use our knowledge base. And so I thought if I um, could quickly convey to this, them that I was behind the scenes and I was listening to them and I wanted to um, create a knowledge base that was living, right, that maybe it would encourage them to keep coming back even if they don't find their answer the first time because they knew it would take me a while to get content in there that answered customers' questions. Um, we're related to this. All of our content was what I called just-in-case documentation. Um, so our development team would work on a feature um, and we, somebody on the support team would work with the development team to write a feature guide document. Um, I'm not a huge, well, so feature guide document. So what is a just-in-case document? I've already sort of told you. It's a feature guide document, um, a, just a manual style article that sort of describes a th um, feature for a theoretical user, right? This is where almost all of us start. Um, we write them because it's an easy place to start. Our marketing team loves them. Users that are looking for a product love them. They can vet the product and determine does it have the things or the features of the functionality that I, that I need. But when it comes to sort of solving problems once you've bought the product, they don't do a great job. Um, some of the problems with feature guides or just-in-case documentation are that it requires familiarity with your terminology. Um, We've done a lot better job at SurveyGizmo in the past couple of years, but we used to have a lot of functional or features that have really odd names. Um, we still have a category of things called actions. So when people are like rage clicking through the app, they end up clicking on actions like maybe it's here. I want to do something. Um, so we have a lot of features um, that people might not be familiar with. Um, so um, related to that, they're difficult to search. They don't know what they're searching for. Like what do we call these things? Um, they're also sort of cognitively difficult to use, right? Um, our marketing team actually required of us, when I started, um, to write our feature guides in a format that started with, what is it, when would I use it, and how do I set it up, right? So if I'm a user using that document, I'm, my, my tasks are to read the document and say, okay, is this what I'm trying to do? Is this the thing that I want? And then they sort of have to read through it again and apply it to their scenario, right? So it's kind of just a cumbersome document to use when you're actually trying to complete a task. Um, the other thing that we ran into, SurveyGizmo is a agile development shop. Um, which I'm sure all of you know what that means. I'm not bragging by any means. Um, but it's difficult to get them done in time for release. And in the past, when our you know, support heroes would write the documents, they would want to like, you know, push off the deadline for the release till they got documentation done. 
So when I took on the documentation coordinator role, I, I, like, I really did not want to stop them. I wanted to be like, I didn't want them to have the experience of me saying, hey, slow down, I'm not done with documentation yet. Um, so um, because our development team is an agile development team, they're doing just-in-time stuff, right? So I'm like, well, if they're agile, I should be agile. Um, so I decided to focus instead of this just-in-case kind of feature guide document, which I still write, actually, um, and focus more on just-in-time documentation. Just-in-time, I'm sure all of us, probably most of us know what just-in-time is. It's actually a manufacturing strategy that some people say started in Japan, some people credit Henry Ford, but basically the idea is you don't warehouse things. You wait till a customer orders a product, you make it and you ship it, right? So you're saving time not, um, not making and warehousing things that customers haven't purchased, right? Um, as applied to documentation, it just means that we create just enough documentation just in time. So. Um, I believe Neil Kaplan said yesterday, like, we're terrible at sort of anticipating what, oh, I thought I just saw that flip. We're terrible at um, anticipating what, what, we, what you questions our users have, so why not just wait until they ask them and write the document, right? So, you know, I do this visioning, I decide I'm gonna start doing just-in-time documentation, um, and, you know, I'm still sort of in the theory phase of how to apply this. Um, so I asked myself, what gets documented in just-in-time, right? Um, so this is what we always document. These are our feature guides, what the software can do. Sometimes this is where we stop. That's where Surveyismo stopped until, until I took over the, or not even took over, until they created a documentation coordinator role. Um, you can add a further lens to look at what users actually want to accomplish. <laughs> now, ideally, there's, hopefully there's more overlap than what we're seeing here, or you're, <laughs> you're not doing a great job of selling your product, but, or building a product that users want. But, you know, we all think that we know, that we all think that the software we're building is exactly what users want, but in reality, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, like, they're in the right place, but we're not really building, you know, um, workflows and functionality that they can find themselves, right? So we also have to find out what do users want to accomplish. And then there's the final lens of documenting just what users can't figure out. And I call this just-in-time documentation. That triangle is probably bigger, the little roundy, curvy triangle. It's probably bigger. But if I just document what users want to accomplish that they can't figure out, then I'm probably meeting most users' needs. So how do I find out what they want to accomplish, and how do I find out what of that what they can't figure out? There's a couple of, there's probably more than these five things. This was sort of my list. Is that here's where I can get some feedback, some systematic feedback about what are they actually doing, um, and what can't they figure out. I decided to go primarily with support tickets. I wish I could tell you this was an academic decision, but it was purely opportunistic because we released a new version of the software. That's where these adorable clouds and mountains and stuff came from. Um, I will tell you, being cute and releasing a software that changes everything does not make people <laughs> happy. <laughs> um, so we released a new version of the software and this is our support queue. <laughs> and that's us. <laughs> so I did support for about a month after, we it was May of 2014, I did support for about a month afterwards. And, you know, I had already sort of decided I wanted to do just in time, and it was really hard to resist the urge to be like, oh my God, there's so much data here. I can code all the tickets, and then I can find which areas of the app are, are, are more complicated, and then with that data, I'd make decisions on what articles need written. And it was still like, you know, it was like, chill out. Like, if you just write small articles that answer every question that's coming into the support queue, provided it's a question that everybody would ask, like, that's a good place to start. You don't have time to collect data and write documentation, so just start churning out content. So, this is the workflow that I developed. Um, 
A ticket comes in, the support hero responds to the customer. Before they submit the response, they ask themselves, is this response generalizable? Will it help other people, right? If it's not, then they're done. If it is, they send it to me. I write a document, and then I send it back to the support hero. And if it's in a timely fashion, they can send it back to the customer and they can say, hey, I let our documentation team know that, you know, that they needed to document this because lots of people are asking this. Here's this document, let us know what you think, right? A great opportunity to wow your customers, go above and beyond, right? Here we are listening to you. So everybody wants the nitty gritty of this. I always think it's funny, but people want to see exactly what it looks like. Um, so we use Zendesk for our ticketing system. I used a Zapier integration to send tickets that are marked as something that need to be documented um, to a Google Sheet. Um, this is the grittiest nitty. <laughs> uh, um, I, I used a Zendesk custom field. Those of you that are familiar with Zendesk, I'm sure know what this is. It just says document this. They check the box, it comes to my queue, they never have to think about it again. Um, and I designed an entire sort of workflow pro pro um, process over around a little checkbox. Um, so this is what a Zap looks like. Anybody else using Zapier? Yeah, Zapier makes you happier. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it just looks for this checkbox and sends it to this Google Sheet, and this becomes my to-do list. Right, so I get the subject and who requested it and what the support hero's name is and the ticket so I can click on it and read through it and get a better understanding of what the issue is. And then over here is just sort of me processing it. Here's what I did. I updated this document and I wrote a new document. Each one of these is a new document that I wrote. So, um, and you can see the percentage that actually get done. The gray ones are ones that I like opted out of. I was just like, eh, let's wait on this, you know. But most of them is like, yeah, that's a great idea. I had no idea people were doing that. Let's document that. Um, so what emerged out of this was a couple of different just-in-time document types. Um, things that are just buried in the user interface that people can't find. Um, how do I kind of things. So sort of um, I like to think of them um, as uh, walkthroughs, things that just require many features and various locations in the app to achieve the sort of complete task. Um, frequently asked questions. I also like fondly refer to these as what the hell documents. <laughs> um, and workarounds. So here's some examples buried in the UI. Um, you can add an essay box to any question in Survey Gizmo. Everybody's seen this. And it says comments. People want to change that, and it's hard to find. Um, if you split up your survey into a bunch of pages, it's hard to figure out how to merge them back together. So there's a document that just covers how to merge them back together. Um, for how do I documents, um, I think the first one's really funny. People print out their survey, and they like, you know, take them somewhere and have people fill them out on paper, and they're like, how do I get this data back in there? And it's, like, it's really hard for people to figure out. It's funny, but it's like, it's a legit question. Um, diary surveys, where the people return to the survey every day for a week or a month or, you know, a period of time, so how do I get all that data into the same response? The second one is also a similar task, a pre- and post-test survey. Um, frequently asked questions, so it's possible to have required questions and completed responses, so they want to know, like, why'd this happen? This seems like it shouldn't happen, but there are ways that it can happen. Um, also, people have, um, our survey links cache, so if they're testing with live links, they can't figure out why they can't see their changes, so we have a tool where you can just clear the cache on your links, but they, like, a lot of non-technical users are never going to think about that. They're like, why can't I put a new question and I can't see it? Um, these are sort of workaround documents. So these are, uh, workarounds I think of as like a feature that's not in the app, but either I, I know how or some smart savvy um, support hero knows how to make it happen. So like our reminder messages go to anybody that started the survey and anybody that has not started it. But some people just want to send it to the people that started. 
Um, so that's a feature that they didn't have that you can, you can get, you can achieve it. Send a text message from your survey, you can make that happen. Um, but these are all just sort of workaround options. So ultimately, you know, I thought that what I, when I, you know, conceived of just-in-time documentation at SurveyGizmo, I thought that what I would end up documenting is that little curvy triangle in the center. And ultimately what I've done is document this green thing, the whole thing. Like I document tons of stuff that you can't do. I document like how to set up a CNAME record in GoDaddy just because lots of people are using GoDaddy to use private domains. Um, so I have a ton of documentation that has nothing to do with SurveyGizmo. Um, which is interesting, I never thought I'd end up there, but um, when people start telling you we need this documented and they thank you for documenting it, you, you keep doing it, right? <sighs> You're not done when you write um, just-in-time documents, though. So I said, you know, I send it back to the support hero. If it's timely, they send it back to the customer. If not, they sort of know it's there, so the next time the customer asks the question, instead of typing out the whole response, they can share the document, right? Um, but then you also have to monitor traffic, right? So one of the keys to just-in-time documentation that I haven't mentioned is that I'm writing MVP articles, so minimum viable product. Um, a lot of them have no screenshots. They're just you know, quick answers that um, answer you know, really specific questions. And then I have to evaluate, how's it doing, right? So if nobody cares about it, I'm gonna unpublish it. If it's doing really well, I'm gonna gussy it up. I love using that word. <laughs> I'm going to gussy it up and put screenshots in there. I'm going to make it more polished. I'm going to make it look like a, you know, um, a more published document. Um, so you're, you're vetting content, right? Um, you're making it really easy to get content out there and let users help you vet the content. Um, the other thing that's really important if you're going to do something like this, like I said, I really wanted it to be clear to my customers that we have a li living knowledge base. Like, hey, I'm here, <laughs> I'm listening, I'm doing things. Um, so let them know that you're doing it. Um, I think I have a slide for this. Um, on our community page, I publish recent articles. It has a date so they know, oh gosh, I just asked that question. I want to do math. Now I can do math in the survey, right? I also do these little new tags. So if they're in the knowledge base, they're like, oh, that's a new article, that's cool. So let them know that you're doing stuff. Um, if they give you feedbacks, um, first of all, you should be getting feedback in your documentation, um, and you should act on it, right? So act really fast. That really wows customers. If you go above and beyond, you're like, so sorry that was out of date, I updated it. Thanks for letting me know. Oh, you saw those. So everybody wants to know, does just-in-time documentation work? Um, this is arguably a different, difficult question to answer objectively. Like, my answer is yes. Yes, it totally works. Um, but, you know, people want to see data. I'm a data nerd. I want to see it too. Um, I have a couple of things that make it look good. This isn't the cleanest data. I'm a statistician, so it's like they're... We have some causation problems here, but... Um, we increased unique sessions per day by 37%, um, which is a proxy for visitors to our site. Of those people, they're spending, um, they're going to less pages, which could mean a lot of things. I'm choosing to interpret it pretty positively, that it means that they're getting to their answer in less clicks. They're finding the article that answers their question. They also spend a lot more time on a single page. Um, I generally say that a, um, article or, um, a user that spends two minutes or more on an article is a quality view, meaning they're reading the content and hopefully getting their answer. Um, this is what, I, so some people <laughs> think that documentation's purpose is to reduce support. Um, I'm not necessarily a believer in that. Um, one of the fellows that comes to the Boulder Denver Write the Docs meetup, which if you're in the Boulder Denver area, you should join and come hang out with us. Um, uh, what's his name? ASCII doctor, Dan? Anyway, yes. Um, he had this great quote, it was, you know, Support's job is to make customers' lives easier. 
documentation's job is to make support slides easier. And you know, that's one of our tasks for sure. Um, so the red line here is total support. You can see it stays pretty level over the past two years. The yellow line at the top is our active users. And this blue line bridging the gap is our documentation um, sessions, unique sessions. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. It's not the cleanest data. I think there's some other stuff going on here that has caused this, but um, I wouldn't say it's reduced support, but we're doing well with documentation traffic. People want to use it. I think it's much more power, powerful anecdotally. So this is an example of a just-in-time document. The, the words aren't important. This is just to show you. This is all the words that are in this document. It's just like, how do you hide your page titles? Why is it so hard? Don't ask me. <laughs> um, and this is what this guy said like last week. This help article was great. I never would have found this with a setting without this help article. Had I simply seen the nav steps on the page, I wouldn't have needed help. Thanks. This is to show you that Jeff is not a plant. Well, this could still be able. <laughs> There's Jeff on May 18th saying, like, it's like, it's like he knew I was coming to present this to you guys. <laughs> right? So, I mean, one save. You, know, you have to know that this is happening elsewhere in your knowledge base. So, some things that I've learned. First of all, it's okay to have a lot of content. Users want to search your knowledge base. The average user is not going to browse. Well, I mean, it depends on what kind of knowledge base it is, right? So if it's an API, API documentation, reference documentation, they will browse. But if they just want an answer to a question for in, your, in your application, they're going to search once, maybe twice. If you're lucky, um, the rare user will search three times. But if they can't find their answer, they're going to contact your support team, or they're going to be frustrated. and they'll just be sad. Um, the other thing um, that sort of um, supports why it's okay to have a lot of content is that docs can be updated just in time too. So for a long time, I was so worried about having too much content because our development team moved so fast. They'd just like change the main navigation and be like, oh yeah, we changed that. And it was like, oh my god, how, how are users going to find the new setup tab? It used to be called general or whatever. Um, and I used to worry so much about having to update every document. And anymore, um, it really, it's an opportunity f for me to wow a customer. They say, hey, the navigation's out of date in this article. And I respond right away and say, so sorry, I updated it. Thanks for letting me know. You know, it's users like you that, you know, make Survey Grismo great. Um, it's okay to document workarounds. Um, if that's what customers want to do and there's a way to do it and you tested it and you made sure there's no problems with um, the workaround, document it. I'm, you know, it's, a, it's above and beyond. People really um, are wowed by that. Um, and fourth, I, I always vacillate on whether I should leave this in here. Um, documentation is its own product. I believe that. I don't believe they would buy it without the other product, right? But, <laughs> like, they're not going to pay for it with, if they're not using Survey Gizmo. But, like, it is its own product. And I think, you know, I mean, it's out there on Google. People are finding these answers and saying, like, you know, figuring out how to do the same thing in SurveyMonkey or, you know, like, and, you know, it's, it's a service that I'm providing not just to our users but to the world. I, you know, I have best practice content. I'm a, I've done 15 years of survey design. Like, I know a lot of stuff about survey design, so I wrote some documents. Maybe that's helping students out there, whatever. Um, so it's, on, it's, an, it's its own product, even if it's just free. Um, so you can do this too. I was really fortunate to have a new version of the software where I could just start from scratch, um, which was, I mean, it was just such a great opportunity. But even if you're not doing, and the other thing too is you go, most of you guys are doing this. Neil is doing this yesterday. I mean, Neil's doing just-in-time documentation. He hasn't called it that, you know? But that's what he's doing, right? He's doing a great job of getting feedback from, um, from support and writing great content, right? Um, so if you want to do just in time too, um, start by just creating a systematic process to get just in time topics. It doesn't have to come from support. It can come from, you know, your sales team or wherever. Just create a process that's systematic. Document it fast. 
and be a champion. So this was one of the hardest parts of making Just In Time successful at Survey Gizmo was that you know, we never really had a documentation team before. Like support was not used to having anybody serve them. Right, so I had to send out, you know, I send out monthly emails like, here's the new articles that I created, here's the one that I, ones that I gussied up because it got so much traffic. And, um, you know, it's really important to let the entire organization know that you're doing it and that's a, that it's a priority. Um, I still write just in case documentation and arguably it takes priority. Like, if Dev is releasing something and I have 10 just in time article requests, I'm gonna write the just-in-case documentation. Um, but, you know, I'm straight back into just-in-time and I try to act really fast and be a champion for it. Um, finally, you know, I'm a statistician. I love acting on data. I like, I like making, making data-driven decisions and I just had to let go of that. I'm making data-driven de de um, decisions still, but I'm doing it after I spend some time writing some content. And that was really hard to let go of. Um, you know, I wanted our entire knowledge base to be polished and every article to be useful to everybody. And I had to let go of that, but it's working, so. Um, if you decide that you wanna do just-in-time documentation, I'd love to talk to you guys about it. Here's ways that you can reach out to me. Um, email, Twitter, um, that's our documentation site. Good luck. <laughs>